Hello folks, welcome back. This is Kweku. I'm a pharmacist. This channel is dedicated to healthcare information as well as pharmacy stuff. So feel free to hit the subscribe button if this is something that you find interesting or useful. Today we'll be doing a review of the medication Atorvastatin, which is marketed under the brand name Lipitor. We'll be taking a look at a brief description of what it is, what it is used for. We will take a look at some dosing guidelines as well as some side effects and some precautions and best practices. Before we delve any deeper though, I just wanted to mention that this review is for informational purposes only, and please do not use it as a substitute for medical advice from your regular physician. So atorvastatin or Lipitor belongs to a class of medications called statins. And you can identify most statins by how their chemical name ends. They all end in statin. It is a very popular medication and up until recently, it remained the number one selling medication worldwide. It is primarily prescribed to take care of elevated cholesterol or high cholesterol, a condition referred to as hypercholesterolemia. It is also prescribed for hypertriglyceridemia, which is um, elevated triglycerides, and also as a prophylaxis or to reduce the risk factors for coronary artery disease, especially for people who are type 2 diabetic or people who have type 2 diabetes. For such people, your cholesterol doesn't necessarily have to be high, but your doctor may prescribe Lepitor or Atorvastatin just because studies show that it reduces the risk of coronary artery disease down the line. There are also a host of other off-label uses or unapproved uses to which you can put Atorvastatin to, but uh, we are not going to get into that in this video. With respect to dosing, you'll find normal ranges between 10 and 80 milligrams. Usually 10 to 20 milligrams is fairly common. You would also typically see doses of 40 milligrams and above if an LDL reduction of 45% or greater is required. In other words, if the doctor needs to aggressively bring down your cholesterol, maybe it's too high, and they are estimating that where you're supposed to be, you are more than 45% beyond that target, then you're obviously gonna see higher doses uh, in excess of 40 milligrams. With respect to how it works, I'm just going to give a very high level overview. I'm thinking of doing a detailed video as to exactly how it works. So if you want to see such a video, please leave me a comment that you want to see it and I'll definitely do it if enough people want to see it. But it works by inhibiting a liver enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. It's a very, it's a long word and a mouthful. That's why we're using the short form HMG-CoA reductase. This enzyme is essential in the synthesis of cholesterol in the body. HMG-CoA reductase is responsible for converting HMG-CoA into a compound called mevalonate. Mevalonate is a precursor for the synthesis of cholesterol, or in other words, it serves as the raw material for the production of cholesterol in the body. Now, statins like atorvastatin inhibit the action of HMG-CoA reductase. So once you take a statin, what happens is that HMG-CoA is prevented or inhibited from being converted into mevalonate. This leads to reduction in the production of mevalonate. And since mevalonate is required in the production of cholesterol, obviously cholesterol is also not produced or produced at a very minimal level. So that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is that if there is a reduced cholesterol production in the body, the body actually needs some amount of cholesterol. I mean, as bad as cholesterol is, it is still essential in the body. So what happens is that the body actually activates mechanisms to start extracting cholesterol that is actually circulating in the blood. So the body needs the cholesterol, the liver is not producing it, so the body tends to the circulating cholesterol in the bloodstream to get their supply of cholesterol that they need. This ultimately leads to a reduction in the blood concentration of cholesterol. That's why when you go take your test, it shows up low. Next, we'll shift our attention to some side effects. And I must say that atorvastatin is generally well tolerated. Um, data shows that just about less than 2% of people actually discontinue atorvastatin due to side effects. But typical amongst them is uh, number one on the list is myalgia, which occurs in about up to 8.4% of the population. Myalgia refers to muscle pain or muscular aches. There's also been reports of diarrhea occurring in about up to 14.1% of the population. And then there's arthralgia. Arthralgia just refers to joint pain, and it's, in, it's observed in up to 11.7% of the population. Urinary tract infections, or UTIs, 
have also been reported in up to 8% of the population. There's also been reports of other kind of pain that is pain in the extremities, percentage is up to 9.3%. And then there's the issue of uh, nasopharyngitis. Now, nasopharyngitis is the swelling of the nasal passages or the back of the throat. And it occurs in up to about 8.3% of the population. That is why sometimes people take uh, statins in general and report of flu-like symptoms. That's probably one of the reasons. Other less common but relatively serious side effects include uh, liver failure. You know, there may be increased in liver enzymes up to a point where there is liver failure. This is very rare, occurs in about 0.2 to 0.3% of the population, but it definitely has been documented. Another serious condition we're taking a look at is a condition called rhabdomyolysis. So this is a situation where um, the muscle actually breaks down and releases its contents, which is called myoglobin. If this happens, it may result in kidney failure because the kidney is not able to take care of all the excess waste that it's supposed to. And obviously, kidney failure is definitely life-threatening and a serious issue. Another reported side effect of atorvastatin is cognitive impairment. So there have been reports of people having memory loss, forgetfulness, and even in extreme cases, amnesia for people that have taken atorvastatin. This is one of the rare ones, but uh, it definitely has been documented. This is by no means an exhaustive list of side effects of atorvastatin. And I also want to mention that when I'm, I discuss side effects of medications, if you are taking the medication and you are not having any issues, there's really no need to worry. A lot of the times I have people reaching out to me, asking me what they should do, even though they are taking the medication and they are taking it for a couple of years and nothing is happening. So these are just academic exercises for to let you know what has been documented. It doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's going to experience this. So if you are taking it and you're having no issues, continue taking it because uh, your doctor has probably weighed the risk benefit and, and decided that the benefit far outweighs the risks for you. With respect to the precautions, the first one is to use, in use with caution in patients who are 65 years or older uh, due to their increased risk of uh, myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. Caution should also be exercised in patients with a history of renal impairment due to an increased risk of myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. Also, a history of liver disease increases the risk of liver dysfunction, so such people should be closely monitored if they, as of necessity, need to be on atorvastatin. And we obviously cannot talk about the liver without talking about alcohol. So heavy uses of alcohol are at a greater risk of liver dysfunction, especially if such people are also taking atorvastatin. So people on atorvastatin should definitely be wary of heavy alcohol. Overall, like I said earlier, atorvastatin is generally well tolerated and it's actually a good medication relatively. So if you are taking it and you are having good results, no need to think twice. Just keep taking it. And um, let me know in the comment section if there is any kind of pe peculiar side effect that you are experiencing that I did not discuss. Once again, thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one.